Hello everybody, I am Jedi Jack Penguin and welcome back to another LEGO Marvel Super Heroes review. So today we're going to be looking at the number 76038, Attack on Avengers Tower. This set includes 515 pieces and originally retailed for $59.99 back on March 1st of 2015. Now I got this set from a $100 bulk lot. Fortunately, it included all the minifigures in addition to all the stickered parts, so I was able to complete it. For a review here, I don't have the original box or instructions, so we're going to dive right in with our minifigure selection. Looking at our very first minifigure, we have Iron Man Mark 43. This version of Iron Man is not exclusive, also coming within the Hulkbuster and Quinjet from 2015. We get some pretty nice leg printing there leading up to the belt piece up to the main torso for this particular character. No arm printing, which is probably not even necessary. Get those dark red arms and hands. And also take a look at the back printing for this character, which is also very nicely detailed with a lot of shininess. We also get some accessories for both the feet and the hands there. We get those translucent blue studs and cylinder pieces. You can remove the helmet piece to take a better look at the facial expression, which is the same one that we saw all the way back in 2012 with an angry look on this side. And then you get a more happy look from the other side. Taking a look at the helmet design, we also get that same sort of helmet mold that we saw back in 2012, where I can easily flip that up to take a better look at the facial expression. I really love this helmet design compared to the newer one that they've been using for a lot of the other comic style Iron Man characters. And we also get some special printing on this one just to signify Mark 43. Now, in addition to that helmet piece, we also happen to get a hair piece, which is the same hair piece that they use in the Iron Man 2 sets there. So, I mean, no complaints there. Eventually, they'll update it to make it more accurate. Another flying character, because I want to get all these out of the way, we have Ultron Mark 1, which is exclusive to this set with some pretty nice leg printing leading up to that belt piece up to the main torso. For some reason, we get a white arm. I mean, I don't know the reasoning behind that. We get that gunmetal gray sort of look for this character, which is really cool to see. We get the dark gray for one of the hands, and we get the same sort of studs and cylinder pieces there just to signify the flying of this character. You can take a look at the back printing. And also, you get some back head printing, which is something that probably wasn't even necessary, but I really like that they went all out with that. On that translucent head, I, I don't really like translucent head pieces. It's not something that I'm, I'm too fond of, to be completely honest, though. I mean, it works. It's fine for this character because it's supposed to be some sort of, like, technology god or something like that. Though, at the end of the day, honestly, I don't really care for this minifigure. And to finish us off, we have one of two Iron Legion characters included in this set, which are technically Iron Man, I would think. I mean, they have the Iron Man helmet. We get some very nice leg printing leading up to the belt piece up to the main torso, just like all the other characters in this set, minus Thor. We get the same sort of action for the flying pieces there with the cylinders and the studs. Really love the color scheme on this using the white and dark blue. I think it turned out real nice. You get the little Avengers logo up there on the chest. And take a look at the back printing there. And we also get nothing exciting for the head piece. We get a translucent orange head, which I don't know why it's like that. It's just weird in my opinion. I mean, this is probably supposed to be another type of robot character. And we also get that Iron Man helmet from 2012, just recolored in the dark blue, which we'll later on see on other characters, and also a new print exclusive to this character that you can lift up to also see the facial expression, which is nothing exciting again for this particular character. We get two of these in here, which are nice, but I mean, it's probably my favorite figure out of this entire set, to be completely honest, just because I love the color scheme. And for our very last minifigure, we have Thor, the God of Thunder, who is not exclusive, also coming in the Avengers Hydra Showdown. I don't know if I own that set. If I do, I'll link a review up on the card above. We don't get any leg printing for this character, which, I mean, it's fine because Marvel doesn't like doing leg printing too often. We get those gunmetal gray arms printing for both the front and the back of the torso. You can lift up that very nice soft felt cape piece in red. I really like getting that cape piece and especially getting a soft felt one like this. I think LEGO's doing a great job upgrading the capes in certain sets as of late. 
can take a look at the facial expression, which I'm pretty sure is exclusive to this particular version of Thor, where we have an angry look from this side, and you can flip that right around to see a more happy look on the other side. We also still get that yellow hairpiece, the Snape hairpiece recolored in yellow. I, I don't like that they're doing that. I wish that it would match the beard. It's just kind of annoying in my opinion. That's really the only flaw with this figure. Now, in addition to our minifigures, we also get a number of these extra parts for the special flying characters. We get a lot of extra studs, a lot of extra cylinder pieces, and we also get a hair piece as an extra piece to go along with your Iron Man minifigure to turn him into Tony Stark. Another piece that was newly introduced at the time is the Super Jumper. I'm pretty sure this was like the first or second year that we saw these appear in various sets. If you don't know how these work, unfortunately Thor is the one who's going to have to test it out because he doesn't have any exciting leg printing. You just snap your character's legs right there and you place them on the ground area. You press down and then you have him flying off screen. As I say all the time, the reason why these don't exist in sets anymore is because it's a pain to get your minifigure's legs off of them and they also somewhat make small dents in the back of their legs so then they can't bind onto the studs anymore, which is a little unfortunate that they didn't think to test that out originally. But either way, they don't exist anymore, so they're no longer a problem. Now getting into the final overall model for the Avengers Tower, there's quite a bit to look at. First of all, I want to say I appreciate that this is completely or almost completely enclosed here. So then you can actually open this up using those hinge brick pieces to take a better look at the interior. That's one thing that I really like about this set. Compared to ones that we'll get in the future, it definitely is a lot smaller than, say, the one that we got back in, like, 2020, 2021. I'm, I don't remember exactly when we got that one. But still, I think that this has lots of cool details, lots of which I probably don't remember offhand from Avengers Age of Ultron. So starting from the bottom and working our way up here... It looks like we have a small med bay or sick bay going on here where we get one of those stretcher pieces. We have a little pillow represented by that one by two tile piece. We have a small analysis. If you want to place a figure there, you can pretend to analyze them. You get one of those medicine bags hanging off the side using the skeleton arm. I like that. And of course we have some drawers. So in the first one we don't have anything, but in this one we happen to get this syringe piece in that lighter blue color. I mean, I guess it's nice, but otherwise there's nothing too exciting going on in there. From the other side, it looks like we have a small area to deploy your Iron Legion characters. We get a bunch of jumper plates if you want to place your characters standing on there. We get some stickers on these 1x6 tile pieces that have the arrows. They're supposed to be able to break out from the front here, which you can actually lift down these using the clip piece connection. You can also slide these out to make it easier to remove your characters, which I also like that feature. In addition, we get some stickers from the front of those windows just to showcase the information about those two Iron Allegiant characters that are included. Another fun feature, because LEGO loves to include these in Marvel sets for some reason, we have a fire extinguisher, which, I mean, is fine. You get that connected via the clip piece. Moving up a level, it looks like we have a robot arm room which you can probably put Iron Man in there and just have these robot arms work on him. You can see that these can actually spin a little bit and they can actually move up and down with that clip piece connection. You get another clip piece connection inside there, which you can also move if you want to, just to help adjust Iron Man. We also get a spinny plate, so you can also spin Iron Man around if you place him on that particular area. We have a room holding the Tesseract, which looks to have the same build that we see in a few other sets. We get a sticker on this flag piece, which hopefully we can take a better look at from this angle, where we have some information about the Tesseract, if you're interested in that kind of stuff. And moving up to the last level over here, it looks like we have some sort of computer thing going on, where we have some stickers on these 1x2 tiles for keyboards, and we have some stickers on these various flag pieces showing the Ultron project. I guess this was when they were trying to create Ultron or something. 
And that leads to the balcony area over here where you have some spots where you can sit your minifigures. We have some various goblets. Another small feature that I forgot to mention before about this area is that if you press down on the goblet, we have a hinge plate that you can lift up and reveal a hidden gun. I mean, I guess that's nice as an extra accessory for your minifigures. We also get some more stickers on these wall elements and also on these curved pieces for the Avengers A that you're gonna see from this side. And from the other side, you get quite a lot of stickered pieces just to create that look from both sides of the building. And we also have another fun feature when it comes to the balcony area. This is technically where you would want to land the Avengers Quinjet, though of course it's not big enough because this isn't really to scale. You can spin these around and break the platform, which also happens to have some more clip pieces down here, which also feature these stud guns because like I love stud guns if you don't know how these work all you got to do is press down at the top and it shoots off into the distance never to be found again we get extras as I showed in the beginning of the video the, though I do prefer these being tucked up and hidden underneath here you don't really need these in the set I guess it's nice for extra play features, it's just not really necessary for me. Another thing that I forgot to mention when it comes to this floor over here is that we have this feature. Where you can have the windows break, I guess you can have someone shooting at the windows and pretend to have them break. You get these Technic connections that you just swing forward to knock them off of those jumper plate pieces and place those right back in. You can also see when you move those two pieces up that these are at a bit of an angle, so it makes it easier for them to fall off. Now bringing us to the very top of the Avengers Tower, one last feature that we have to talk about is this spot where we have a hidden drone, which also happens to have more of these stud guns here and more stud guns on the drone, which you can easily slide out of there. You get some stickers on these flag pieces just to show that this is part of the Stark Industries Technologies stuff. You get the clip piece connections there for the little flags. You can have the drone fly around and pretend to shoot people with the drone if you really want to. Though I personally really prefer this as just another hidden feature in here. And now one other thing about this particular tower, which honestly I don't think is really necessary, is its ability to spin in a 360 direction. To be completely honest, I don't think that was done on purpose, but maybe it was. I'm not 100% sure. And of course we get some antennae from the very top just to make this a rather tall build. So overall, for a $60 set back in the day, I think this was well worth it. You get two of your main Avengers characters, Iron Man and Thor. You get two of those Iron Legion characters who are exclusive in addition to the Mark I version of Ultron, which, I mean, isn't really a character that I'm too familiar with, so I honestly don't really care for those last three. I mean, I like the color scheme of those guys, though other than that, this set just doesn't really do it for me. I think that LEGO has made better. Avengers Towers. I hope that they eventually get to making a UCS scale, a giant monster build similar to say the Daily Bugle set that we recently got as of last year. And might I add Avengers Age of Ultron is probably one of my least favorite Marvel movies so I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm really hating on this set. I'm not. I mean, I think it's a nice set, it's just probably not for me. So yeah, that's pretty much all that I have to say for this video. Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below what your thoughts are on this set. Also remember to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon so every time I upload a new video. So yeah, that's it for now, and I will see you next time. Bye!